Hi everyone, Vicki Verley here, Rock and Roll Prophetess, and we're going to look at the full moon in Scorpio, which is on May 10th, 5.42 p.m. Eastern, but times will vary. As I'm recording this, Mercury has just gone direct, finally, and Mercury is direct in here, but it's been hanging out with this Uranus here. And, um, the Mercury, this in Aries here, trining Saturn, um, and I just have noticed, like, uh, with me, it's manifesting in this, like, real nervous energy that I just can't seem to get rid of. I mean, all my old tricks are not working. I just came in from mowing the lawn for the first time this year. It was almost knee-high and wet grass. It was quite a workout. And I still have this inner nervousness, like this inner, um, you know, Uranus and Mercury together is just like mental, 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 nervous, nervous, nervous. And then Aries is go, go, do, do. I've noticed in other people, I think, a lot of aggression. You know, and I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not trying to be aggressive. But I like, you know, just all my normal tricks aren't working. A lot of physical activity. If I feel this pent up nervous energy, I just, you know, try to ground myself in the earth. Like, go on the lawn, working out in the yard. You know, it's spring here, so doing this yard cleanup, getting everything together. I have a huge yard to have a double lot. I take care of it all on my own because I like to. I like to be out there. It helps me, you know. And um, it's just not working. I'm just not able to get rid of this nervous energy or shake it off. And then all of a sudden, now here comes Venus is in there too in Pallas. So we're having all this Aries energy and this Mercury and Aries energy together. And then it's like a, a mutual reception as well because Mars is in Aries. And, uh, I mean, Mercury's in Aries, and Mars is in Gemini, which is each other's rulers. If you look over here, Gemini is moved by Mercury, Mars in Aries. So, this Mars-Aries energy, even though the full moon's in Scorpio, full moon's in Scorpio, but this is what's getting me. And now I'm, I'm looking, this is, you know, whatever, this is the third, this is a week ahead of time, and it's still active at then. I'm like, I don't know how much more I can take of this crap, man. Well, for me, one thing that'll help often will be to go to the water, but um, it's been really cold, so I haven't been going to the water. But all my other tricks aren't working, like even sex, you know, where if you're single, you know, masturbation, whatever, because that'll that's a tension reliever, you know, that'll get rid of that energy, but um, it's nothing is working. It just seems to be kind of just stuck there, you know. Um, so there's this underlying tension, this underlying, and there has been a lot of violent things coming up if you watch the news. I hate to, you know, I don't really watch the news. I try not to, but it, you, you catch it here and there, these shootings and all this violent stuff. And it's just like, God, there's this energy is combustible. It's just too much, you know. And like I said, I don't even know what the, what the thing to do is because everything I'm trying, I think the water is going to be the thing because the water can put out the fire a little, you know, or subdue the flames. But so this is happening. There's this tension, this nervousness. And even though the sun's in Taurus, I'm not feeling that groundedness. I'm feeling this. I'm really feeling this a lot. Uh, the other big news is I think it's like the day before the nodes are moving in, changing signs. So this is huge. You know, this is a huge thing. And when I do those um, those uh, chart readings of your soul journey chart readings, the past life, and that I rely heavily on the nodes. I mean, it's not a book interpretation. There's certain things that are attributed to each node up and down. You know, I might even do a video or write a book on it or something, but when I do your chart, it's a psychic thing. You know, I start with that, and then just like this, when I do these charts, I kind of start with the astrology, and then it kind of goes off into a psychic thing. But it's like, you know, the south node, the tail of the dragon is where we've been as a collective, and the North Node is what we're striving to be, and they're always opposite. They're always in opposite signs. So we've just came out of the Virgo-Pisces axis. That's where we've been for the last couple of years. And it was heavy because we had Chiron, we had Neptune. There was a whole bunch of stuff um, involved in it. Now, so it was this heavy, deep Pisces energy. We were trying to kind of get out of that or go into the Virgo end of it and kind of analyze it and kind of come to terms with it and bring it into our cognitive mind or into the 3D reality. Now this is a different energy altogether. We want to strive to be like the Leo or the fifth house energy. Leo, sun, fifth house energy. It's fun. It's Leos don't take things too seriously. If I had to do one sentence for a Leo, is that they don't take things too seriously. Leo energy is blow it off, laugh it off, um, joke it off, you know, have fun. It's romance, it's love, it's entertainment, it's amusement, it's creativity, it's children, 
it's childlike at its best, like childlike innocence and, you know, unencumbered, un, uninhibited, untainted, um, you know. But at its worst, it can be childish, you know. It can, that's the other part of it. And, you know, there's times when you do have to take things through. The, the Aquarian nature in opposition to this is very cerebral. Aquarian energy is the humanitarian, what's good for all, you know, um, Leos need a lot of attention, like a child needs a lot of attention, and then you might even look at like uh, the Aquarius as the parent, although Saturn's more the parent, but Aquarius co-ruler is Saturn, you know, is the parent, and this is the child, you know. But by contrast, Aquarius are very, the energy is very cerebral. It's very uh, in your head. It's very um, reason, thought, f you know, uh, philosophy. It's a higher knowledge. And then, you know, Leo energy is very much grounded in, you know, in the earth. You know, it's the, well, it's the sun, but it's, in, it's um, rolling around in the dirt, having fun, you know, while the Aquarian nature is off, they're showing me an image of somebody like writing on a scroll with a quill, you know, and then these are somebody rolling around wrestling with the dogs and the kids in the, in the grass or something. And this one's off in, in the sun, playing in the sun, rolling around in the grass and stuff. And this one's off in, under an umbrella, you know, it's kind of like, um, oh, I, you know, I don't want to get dirty. I don't, you know, I'm, it's kind of that kind of energy. I don't want to get my hands dirty. And Leo's, and especially in the time of Taurus, we're going to get our hands dirty. Um, so we're, we're, we're meant to embrace the lighter side of life. We're meant to embrace the fun in life. Now this 29 in particular of Leo, I believe that's that Regulus. If that's in somebody's chart, I think that's what they all talk about, Trump's chart, about him meant to be the king or whatever, you know. Um, this 29 Leo, that's that royalty. And if it does show up, like if it shows up in your south node, you, it will definitely tell us that you were royalty in another life. But then how I do the reading is it's psychically I'll expound on that. I'll start getting visions about particulars, you know. It's not just, you know, flat interpretations, you know. But anyway, so there's this um, royalty regal. I want to take this to a higher level, and you could be, you know, it's self-love. And then, of course, you know, self-love, loving yourself, treating yourself, having a little fun. If it's like stay home and do your taxes... <laughs> Or, you know, write an essay about what's wrong with humanity. Or get out and just forget about it for a while. Just blow it off for a while. Have a little fun. Love yourself. Have some fun. Treat yourself to something. Um, treat your inner child. You know, that's the fifth house stuff, too. The other side of it, the sun, is the ego. You know, so you can be love yourself to the nth degree, and it can be a little much, you know, in some cases. It can be you know, um, going overboard with the self-love and, and not, not, there ha ultimately there has to be a balance, you know, and because you have to embrace the humanity, 11th house is everybody, groups and organizations uh, that you belong to, um, but also the fun aspect of yourself, treating yourself, uh, treating yourself like the child or your kids, or if it's like, this could be computer, Aquarian, and it's definitely computers, Uranus is computers, technology. This could be real simple, like put down the damn phone for a minute and p go play with your kids or your dog or something, you know, go out to the park and have a little fun. Put the technology away for a minute, you know. We're going to get into the Scorpio part of it, but when I opened this chart, everything to me was pointing still at this Libra, even though it's, you know, it's squaring the Pluto and it's opposing uh, over here, the palace and stuff. Palace can be that kind of mental energy too. You know, there's all this mental, mental, mental. And it's just, it's really getting to me. I'm really like feeling it. I just feel tension and I just feel like restlessness. You know, it's restless. And like I said, I have my normal tricks if that stuff starts welling up. You know, you get out in the garden, do a lot of physical activity. Yeah, I, which I've been doing, and, you know, sex, and um, or masturbation, whatever, you know, that's a form of sexuality, that's a release, you know, all these different ways, and I'm just not, it's not, uh, having difficulty shaking it. Uh, yeah, so I was talking about this, the king, so treating yourself like the king, but not to the, not to the, um, not to the extreme degree of a dictator, you know, and at, to others' expense. Um, Leo's uh, Leo energy needs a lot of stroking. You know, it needs a lot of adoration, stroking. 
of the ego. But it, you can. It, it, I, see, my mom was a total Leo. My mom had like almost every planet in Leo, you know, and she was a Leo son. Um, so I learned early on, you know, how to. I likely I get along with Leo. I, well, I was raised by one, but I learned early on, you know, when dealing with a Leo energy, you get more honey. You know, you get more whatever. You catch more flies with honey. You get you do better by. Um, because if, if you dote on them, they're going to dote on you. They're going to just pour. Nobody knows how to dote on somebody than a Leo. Leos pour out that loving energy. And nothing feels better than being doted on by a Leo, by basking in their sun energy, you know. So it's, you know, they give as good as they get. They're passionate, you know. They give as good as they get. Which is something that could be said about Scorpio energy, too. Because <laughs> they certainly give as good as they get, too. And, um... So this this full moon is in Scorpio. I like this full. Actually, I like it because it's hitting my chart in a lot, a lot of real positive ways. A lot of cool stuff is coming into hitting my personal chart. If you ever wanted to do that, a good way to do that, if you're just watching these videos, like to learn astrology, and you can do this, I believe, on astro.com too. You run a bi wheel or a tri wheel. You put your natal chart in the middle, and then you put the this chart on the outside, and then it's real easy to see where these transits are lining up with your planets. You know. Um, if if you're having trouble visualizing, I don't I don't really have that trouble, but um, it's it's something that if you're learning astrology, you might want to try doing. But anyway, so the full moon's in Scorpio, so things are going to get revealed big time. Watch this, watch what happens. Secrets are going to come out. I'm telling you right now. And with Scorpio, it could be sexual stuff too. You know, that's that always you know sex sex scandals again. Something could be happening in one of these big sex scandals, or something could um, come to light. A new one, maybe, will, will show up. Scorpio is uh, intuition. They, the, they, they can see through all the bullshit. Because this is a lot of busy, busy bullshit, you know, with this Gemini, Mercury, Aries stuff. This is just blah, 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 chatter, 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 nah, 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 nah. aggression, aggression, chatter, chatter, nah, 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 nah. too much, too much. Completely different from the Scorpio um, Taurus energy, right? Um, they don't, this isn't in that energy at all. You know, this is outside of the realm of this. These two energies, the Taurus and the Scorpio, one thing is that there's a definite calm. They're fixed signs, and even though Scorpio is a water sign, it's very grounded energy. It's very stable. It's very grounded. It's very get real. I mean, nobody can get real like um, Scorpio. Get right to the point. Well, Sag just can too. Sag energy can be like that too. But instead of blah, 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 like this is like a bunch of chickens, a bunch of hens, cackle, 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 blah, 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 blah. You know, just it's this nervous energy. It's this overthinking, over talking, busy, 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 but getting nowhere. It's, that's what it just feels like to me. You know, it's just all this busy energy. But you know, like people that want to argue but don't want to offer solutions. You know, well, blah 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 blah. Well, you said this and that. Na 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 na. You know, it's just ah. Take a chill pill, man. <laughs> That's what this is. You know, Scorpio will just sit there and it's just like fixed, calm, centered, you know. Well, stop doing the blaming. Stop chatter. Stop all the chatter, man. And the Scorpio moon, that's a time to really get go within. That's a time to get into this deep inner knowing knowledge uh, uh, to your deepest soul of soul. Uh, you know, only thing deeper is Pisces, and it is trining the Chiron here, and it's squaring the nodes in a wide orb here, and um, we still do have all those high degrees that, like we were talking about before. You've got these two uh, at 25, 26 trine Saturn. See, I have Sag Moon at 26. Oh, that's my Sag Moon is up here. So what is missing? The Leo. Well, very soon, because this the nodes uh, are always retrograde, so that means the degrees are always going lower, lower, lower. They go direct for a couple days, and then you know it's for the main movement of the nodes is in retrograde always. So that's why it's just changed. It's at 29, and it'll work its way down to zero, and then 29 again. So it won't be long before this Leo gets here, at the, and shines that full. I mean, it's it's an orb now at three degrees. It's an orb. So there's this grand trine and fire. So that's very action oriented. But you know, with Scorpio energy interjected into this, yeah, it's action oriented. But let's 
let's use your action wisely. Let's use this energy wisely. Like I said, let's not just be blah, 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 blah. Like a bunch of hand, cackling hens. That's what I just keep seeing. You know, yak, 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 yak. And, um, you know, that's, the, that's a very much against my nature. You know, I'm lacking air in my chart. I have Saturn and Aquarius. That's it. You know, <laughs> that's not very airy. Uh, by the way, I have Sun and Mercury in the third, so that gives me a little bit of that Gemini. People guess me as Gemini a lot, uh, but I'm not. Uh, but, um, you know, that's very, it goes against my grain. You know, I can't stand to be around a bunch of cackling. You know, I need, this is very much having, like, time alone. Uh, Scorpio energy is, is sort of like uh, sovereign. It's sort of like uh, this in, in solitude. It's, Pisces is that way, too. But Scorpio is that way, too. You need time to um, get your answers. Everything can't be solved from a mental, 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 mental. And then, you know, maybe the answer to my first uh, quandary about this energy, how it's personally just bugging me to, like crazy and it's not even peaking yet, is, um, you know, having fun. You know, I'm, I'm trying to blow it off like typical Capricorn fashion work, bust my ass and work. <laughs> Uh, instead of maybe I just need to blow it off and have some fun, you know, maybe I should take my own advice here, you know, embrace that Leo energy. So this is going to be a whole nother, um, like I said in the monthly forecast, the Leos are kind of the way showers for the next couple years or so, a uh, year and a half to two years, and I think the node stays in a sign. And um, this is a time the Leos are the way showers, the Leos at their best, okay, not the egomaniac Leo energy, but the fun-loving Leo, the Leos who don't take anything too seriously, don't make everybody their friend. Leo makes everybody their friend. You know, that's why my mom was great in the bar business, you know, because she, she'd make everybody her friend, you know, even if she liked them or not, you know. Um, Aries, will, if, you know, are not, can be friendly, but they also are quick to short, they have a short fuse, you know, Aries energy. And Scorpio hold a grudge forever. They can be very brooding. You know, so there's this, like, um, let it go, keep things light, have some fun, uh, forgive and forget. You know, get out in the sun, uh, treat yourself, treat yourself to some fun, treat yourself to some, uh, fall in love. Fifth house is falling in love, for having romance, doing childlike things, spending time with children, your children. Again, like, put the technology down. But everything to me is pointing at this, God, it just seems like everything points over to Jupiter and Libra. So we're still trying to maintain balance here. We're still trying to balance between the North and the South node, balance between uh, Aries and Libra, you know, balance between Scorpio and Taurus because it's a full moon, balancing all this opposition. This is also sextiling. The Sun will be trining Pluto and um, the Pluto-Vesta conjunction, which is getting in there real close now, one degree off, and the Moon is sextiling it. So this Pluto-Juno energy is coming in again, too. And it's kind of like I was saying in the last uh, reading, the last chart reading, about how Juno knows how to get what she wants, you know. Sometimes, you know, that's not really, I'm not, uh, I've never been like a real girly girl, and that's not my way at all, you know. Uh, but that in this kind of an environment, that might be the, what, the way to go, you know. You catch more flies with honey, you know. Uh, you might have to stroke, rather than going trying to start a war or start a fight with somebody, you maybe have to stroke a little egos here or, or do a little compliments. Or in Libra energy, really just try to see their side of things, you know. Try to see that somebody else's side. Uh, there's a lot of Aries energy, so there's a lot of things that can be initiated. You know, a lot of things that can be... But to me, again, it just feels really, really scattered. Like there's no direction. I feel like this this Scorpio new full moon, I should say, um, could give some solid foundation. Some with Taurus here, solid direction. You know, I'll be glad when Mercury gets into uh, Taurus. I'll tell you. Um, but anyways, um, you know, some solid direction because you're running around like chickens with their heads cut off over here. You know, it's just scattered and it's just uh, frantic and it's just you know. It's too much. It's just too much. Too much for me, anyway. Some people th like that vibe and thrive in it, and if you do, more power to you. But I'm not one of them. And it's, it, I'm fine. it's shaking me up a little bit. I, I'm getting a little... It's feel, feeling shaken up and feeling... Um, 
having a hard time finding this. So I'm hoping this Scorpio full moon is going to really help that, help me find my sender, help me find my, um, you know, my my solid footing, get my feet on solid ground, and have the the wisdom and the, and, the, and the inner knowledge and hear my intuition above all the chatter. Quiet that chatter and listen to that inner Scorpio um, energy, you know. Honestly, I forgot about the nodes um, changing sign. That's something we're going to have to, I'm going to have to contemplate a little bit more. Um, the nodes by transit, I feel, are more if it's going to hit something of your personal planets, if it's going to activate one of your personal planets, then it can align you with opportunities. If the south node is, um, well, it, it's going to be, if it's a, if this is conjuncting one of your planets, then the north node's opposing it, you know, so. But if it's more in the south node energy, then this is past stuff that's going to come up, you know. With the, with the energy being in Aquarius, it's going to be past stuff uh, about your ideologies, I think, a lot. I know that's the realm of Sagittarius, but I think of Aquarius that way as well. Um, your ideologies, um, your, you know, your friends, your groups of friends, for sure. Many of us might be changing groups of friends during these next couple of years. You know, we might be wanting to go with more people who are more fun and rather than people that we've just been with, you know, forever. You know, I've noticed that since getting involved more in social media, I wasn't really doing any social media for a long, long time other than YouTube. And Pinterest, those are my two things that I like. But I got, you know, railroaded into joining Facebook. I was like, I'm never joining Facebook. <laughs> and I finally did about a year ago. And if I'm going to be brutally honest, which that's the Scorpio energy, most of these people that I know, I mean, you, you see them in short doses. That was always my thing, especially all my musician friends. Yeah, hang out at the jams with them, we play together, we do a gig together. Yeah, we get along great, we have fun playing music and everything's good, which is all this Leo Fifth House stuff. But now that I'm kind of getting to know more about them, like what they're into and what they think, it's like, Jesus, I don't, what the hell? You see, I mean, I, it, it's shocking to me how much I don't have in common with so many people that I've known. And beyond that, too, like just people that, you know, I knew from growing up and that, you know, you touch base. Well, it's nice. That's nice to do and keep up with family. You know, I use it minimally. Um, but what do, we, what do we have in common? Other than that we grew up together, nothing. Like pretty much nothing, you know. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm laughing about it. I'm not trying to be bitchy about it, but it's just like you're, you're realizing that. It's just like, you know. Yeah, well, we were planted in the same area, and we grew up together, or we went to the same school, or whatever. But honestly, do we have anything in common these days? Not not much, you know, and, and this could be some realizations that you're coming to. Because the fifth house is your heart's desire. The fifth house, too, can be, this uh, axis of the eleventh and fifth can be letting go of these restrictions that these groups have put on you. Uh, and that's what's so great about the internet, too. I mean... Because before you would have to go out and travel around and meet all these different people from all over. You would might never, I've met so many people that I would never have met, you know, without technology from all over the world. I read for people from all over the world and it's fantastic and I love it. Um, and you, your, your tribe, you're realizing that maybe that's this tribe that you've been associated with and again, maybe it's just where you were planted. Um, maybe that's not really, they don't share your heart's desire. Or maybe, do you really even have fun with them? Do you really even like hanging out with them? <laughs> Again, it's kind of like in limited doses, you know. But you were brought up, especially if the new younger people, you know, if you're like, you know, in your 20s or younger watching this, then this is probably, you know, you've been able to seek and find your people from early ages. See, for all people, as older people, <laughs> over 40 or, you know, even you know, mid-30s and up, it's like, you know, there was a time when there was no, we, you know, we grew up, there was none of that, you know. And, um, you know, you were just, people you went to school with, the people in your neighborhood, and that was pretty much it, unless you traveled or whatever, you know, you might have, whatever, you know, you know, might have cousins or different relatives you go to visit and meet new people, but it wasn't really about, you know, there wasn't really, or through groups and organizations like scouting or different things, but it still was your local chapter. I mean, you really... You know, you really, and people want to hang on to that for some reason, you know. And um, that doesn't, just because that's what it was, doesn't mean it's better. And that's the lesson of the nodes. 
because the South notice the past and the North notice the future. Just because it's the status quo or it's the established thing doesn't mean that it's the best thing. The North Node is always striving for new and new exciting things. So, you know, many people might, you know, take up new fun hobbies or forms of entertainment or start, you know, this is the entertainment, this is music and stuff too, and doing, the, you know, performing on stage and things like that. So, you know, these are all things that are conducive to Leo. So it's time to have some fun. It's time to love yourself. It's time to have some fun. It's time to cut loose from groups and organizations that maybe you've just are with because just because just because you always knew I mean it's not like oh I hate you now you're an asshole I'll never talk to you again and it, that's not the vibe at all it doesn't have to be all or nothing but it's just like you know maybe I want to meet some new people that are kind of more on the same page as me you know or maybe I don't um maybe I don't have much in common with this group anymore you know uh, well, with me too at the bars, you know, I realized how many of my friends were, you know, are really drug addicts and alcoholics. Because <laughs> I don't really drink. I never was a big drinker, and I really just don't drink at all anymore. Very, very seldom. I'll, if I go out to hear a band, I'll order a drink just because I know as a bar owner it's not cool not to order a drink. I maybe order a drink and buy people a couple drinks, other people. But I usually don't even drink it. I have a couple sips and I'll just leave it because I don't want to go into a bar where there's live music and not spend any money or a club or whatever, you know. But um, you know, I'm realizing that now that I'm not in the bars all the time, that that's you know, the, even my female friends. It's not even just guys I dated or whatever, or boyfriends and this and that. My female friends are all like heavy drinkers. Well, the thing that we had in common, how, where did I meet them? I met them in the clubs and in the bars. And people, in my case, who hang around in the music scene, it all takes place in the clubs and the bars and stuff. So, you know, I'm, I'm coming to these realizations at all, and it's, it's hard because I don't want to be in a bar, but yet you want to have friends. <laughs> you know, you can't be the hermit all the time. And in the, the case of the, the music scene, we do have the music in common, you know, there is that in common, but, um, but it, it's, a, you know, it's like being torn. The opposition is being torn between opposite energies, you know, and it's, it's hard. It's hard to detach from groups that you belong to. For some of you, it could be your family or even your religion that you were brought up in, even though religion is more ninth house, but Saturn's in there too. Saturn's in Sagittarius, so that's, you know, people are, you know, examining their religions. And, um, you know, they see it as a betrayal of, you know, if I betray my religion or my family, even though, you know, there's many absurd things in every religion because of the old beliefs, you know, and I don't, I'm not knocking anybody's religion. I really don't want to get into that, but these are some of the things. This is definitely religion or groups that you belong to, even though Ninth House is considered religion. Many people will go along to uh, belong to groups because of their uh, religious affiliation or do things with their church groups and stuff, which is cool. It's some, the community and communal things are cool. But uh, especially with this 29, is that what you really want to do? Is that how you really want to spend your time? Like me, do I want to spend my time in a bar? Hell no. I was raised in a bar. You know, I spent enough years, wasted enough years of my life in a bar. You know, that was never anything I wanted to do, but I, you know, I just was in, indoctrinated into it, you know. So these are the kind of things I feel like we're going to be looking at. What makes your heart sing? What makes you shine with the Leo, with the sun? What lights you up? What makes you shine? But then, again, not at, at others' expenses. You do have to take into the community's event, you know, um, the community into a, a consideration, into account. Uh, so I think that's, you know, I'm sure we're going to, I'll be pondering this more and more. We've got a year and a half of this to, to think about. But, um, you know, so there's big changes, big shifts and changes are happening. All this Pisces energy has moved into fire. The node has moved into fire. It's fire, fire everywhere. You know, so fire is action oriented. Fire energy is the doers, the movers and shakers, um, the initiators. Um, so it's a lot to, even though the sun's in Taurus and the full moon's in Scorpio, there's a lot of fire energy going on here. And pretty much we do have a grand trine in fire. I mean, I, the node's in there, two more, two more degrees or so. I mean, it's in there. So uh, it's fire. Uh, action-oriented, being true to yourself. I think that's even that could be first house, but I think that in which all this Aries energy is. But Leo again is more um, the fifth house is what makes you happy. 
getting in touch with what makes you happy, not just going along with the group because that's how it's always been and that's what we're going to do. But again, in a way, you may find yourself detaching from some of these groups, but in a way, that's not like, oh, all of a sudden, well, you, you suck, I hate you, goodbye. You know, it doesn't have to be like that. You know, I always say the bars are a nice place to visit, but I don't want to live there. <laughs> you know, I pop in and now and then and visit some of my friends, buy, buy other people some drinks, catch up, well, how you doing? I mean, these people were part of my life for 40 years or so, you know, a long time. And they all, they're like a, a second family to me. The bar people that were in my parents' bar were totally like a family. It was a family bar. So I care about them. I want them. I hope they're doing well. I hope that you know everything's going good for them. I want to know how's your kids, how's your grandkids. You know that's all cool and good. But do I want to hang out there all the time? No, I don't. I don't want to hang out there all the time. You know. But can you drag them off their bar stool? <laughs> Get them out in the sun. <laughs> that's another thing. <laughs> that could be a difficult task too. And it's a task that's it's it's a fool's errand. It's a fool's task. Why would you try to? Everybody's gotta you know do what makes their own heart sing. That's the I think that could be the key thing for a Leo uh, node too. Well, you know, wild thing. You make my heart sing. You make everything groovy. Wild thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's where I'm gonna end it because I'm getting off silly. Wild thing, I think I love you. That's, that's fifth house, too, but I want to for sure. Anyways, you move me. I can't stop with the wild thing. Stop! stop. <laughs> Alright, I'm getting silly. That's the Leo energy coming in. We're getting a little too silly here. So, big changes. Um, Scorpio, full moon. Shed some light on some, tr some inner truths. I think that's what it's really going to be. Uh, maybe find peace and solitude, make sense of all this crazy chatter stuff that's going on. I mean, I, that's what I, I'm, tell me what you guys think in the comments. I always like to hear, but that's totally, it's like nervous energy. It's like this underlying nervous energy, like anxiety, like low grade anxiety. And I'm again, I don't really take pills. I never wanted to take any pills for that or anything, but, um, my solution again is always go work in the yard, you know, go do something physical, sex touch with nature you know walk do outside activities ground yourself you know burn it up get rid of it and it ain't working it's still just this low under under just under the radar this nervous energy and i see people are getting i see a lot of people getting in arguments and pissed i mean i'll stay clear of that but i mean this is there's this weird aggression stuff going on so Scorpio is a good time to, you know, I, the, the, the thought of just a prayer for peace came into mind. Any kind of prayers I just feel, it just, just came to me. Like, uh, done, sent out on this Scorpio, I think, would be very powerful. Very powerful and very intense and um, very... Well, right now with the, with the Saturn in the Galactic Center, too, you know, that there's a portal there where energy is coming and going but we've talked about that anyway so here it is 29 leo the nodes are in, have changed signs leos you guys are the way showers so show us uh show us the right way show us how to live life have fun live life to the fullest that's a leo energy right okay everybody i'm kind of i'm just chatting on and on this is too much i gotta go but anyways thank you guys for everything you do uh liking sharing commenting supporting my channel buying the decks go to my site vickyverley.com you can find all the information how to get the readings how to get the decks and everything's available on there i hope you have a great full moon i hope you're this energy's not making you crazy here. <laughs> okay, let me know. I'd like to hear about it. Have a great full moon in, uh, I was going to say full moon in Leo, but of course it's a full moon in Scorpio. And remember your love and beauty incarnate, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.